Hello everyone, welcome to the 17th day of Improve Your Chess with Sagar. Uh, a great pleasure to have all of you here. I see over 100 people already have been here waiting for the session. So uh, apologies for being a couple of minutes late. But today is going to be another interesting day where we are going to learn about open files. It's known as the highways on the chessboard and we are going to take a serious look at this imbalance. You know, we are coming close to completing all the imbalances, the sort of static long term imbalances. Uh, and today might be the last one and tomorrow we'll go to development and initiative. So. Uh, Let's first begin with some positions like we always do. I would like to give a shout out to a lot of people who are here. Uh, Vishal Kumar, Kalidos Pechi Ganesh, Pradeep Kanitkar, Kompeli Ananda Reddy, Alan K. Thomas, Chess with Shamil, Punit Basu, Quest, Honi Arora, Vishal Kumar, Nishan Neel, Saurav Banerjee, Durgesh Kadwe, Swayams Ubale, Ahmed Justin, Swanan Datar, Tharun M. Many, many people, yeah, and lot of good, a uh, lot of people coming back again. As I see, a lot of known names, but also a few new ones. I would like to share with you some good news as well about yesterday, but more about that in a bit. Uh, let's first begin with. The training so we go to account.chessbase.com and let's go to the training portal by the way a big thanks to Tahseen Mohammed who's contributed 20 rupees the first contribution of today and I'm going to talk about the money that we have raised yesterday quite a lot yes so here's the first position it's black to move and very difficult one to start off with. I guess it will take you a lot of time to get this one. <laughs> Mayur Gondarekar says, if the lockdown continues, please continue with these classes, not just for others, but also for my final GM norm. Okay. Yes, Queen H2 as rightly pointed out by everyone. I'm just checking if the internet is okay. I guess it's fine for now. But I hope that today the internet will not, uh, you know, we won't face too many issues. Yes, Kushal Jani Encyclopedia, opening encyclopedia 2020 is released. Well, we'll come to that as well. Let's go to the next one. What about this one? This is white to move. Well, Nishan Neil says, I just got an account but uh, I do not know how to use the opening tool. Okay, I have made a video on the same and maybe you can have a look at it on YouTube. Yes, Rook into E6. Very good. If Rook, Shanks has given the complete line. Rook into E6. If Queen into E6, Queen G7 mate. If Queen into F6, then Rook into F6 already is winning. But you must note that you can't take on e8 because it's a check already. So, rook e6, queen e6, and it's a mate. Well done, guys. Okay. <clears throat> Some easy ones. Yeah, I think it's uh, somehow I. Ah, it's Chess Base India. 
maybe i should have gone through my normal account but seems i logged in yesterday with the chess base india account that's why it's uh, giving easier positions but okay doesn't matter let's let's go to uh, let's solve this and then go to what we have to learn anyway the main idea of all of this is to get your brain thinking so that uh, so okay you take this and you make a queen and uh, this is also very easy uh, so also easy maybe it's just too easy for you guys yeah all these things uh, yeah let's look at this this is mate in one a little bit tricky but okay i mean namrata rao says i won three matches in the blitz tournament one by time one by checkmate and other by resignation very good very good how many of you here played the tournament yesterday the online event i would like to know um yes queen into f4 mate very good this is the right answer and all of you have got it <clears throat> very good okay i'll do the last one and this is white to move well sometimes you start off with easy stuff and then you get to the tough ones so maybe during the training you are going to be really stretched hard today okay so many people played wonderful prathamesh divekar played srishti chhede pradeep das raghavendra tomar pradyumna kanukolu vaibhav mazumdar mitesh borkhetarya siddharth s okay so all of you played did you get to play against some grandmasters or uh, did you did you someone did beat some grandmaster or something like this maybe made use of some imbalances yes bishop c4 everyone is right you pin the rook and you get a good position you win some material okay um all right let me tell you what happened in the tournament yesterday we already have the report up on our website so here you see we raised a quite a good amount 2 lakh 39742 uh that's a good amount that we raised and as you can see here i i did do mention this in my report today morning that with it was the top seed shashi kiran contributed 20000 nilotpal das contributed 20000 uh, the bendu barua contributed 20000 arjun eri gesi was the highest contributor with 25000 nihal sarin came at the last moment and he contributed 7500 Uh, Aditya Ramanathan says he got to play against a WGM and an IM and won both games. Wow, Aditya, you should share these games with us. Maybe put in your what's your account name? I can I have the games with me. Maybe I can find it. Uh, Vijay Lakshmi, Sri Ram Jain, Minakshi, the chess family uh, contributed seven thousand. Tanya, Magesh, Arun Prasad, Tej Kumar, Shrinath, Ankit Rajpara all contributed five thousand rupees. Lakshman contributed four thousand five hundred. And this is Shiv Shom here, a youngster from Mumbai who, seeing all these top players, also contributed two thousand five hundred. I'm sure that many of you here also contributed amounts here, so they have been mentioned in the. Um, in the table and we had vidit who raised 37000 rupees uh, through his live stream these are the people who contributed to his live stream and totally in all 
2,39,742 was raised. So it's a great amount. And we have a, the winner of the tournament was Nihal Sarin. He beat with it, but I think all those who watch the time, uh, watch the live show uh, saw that how with it was better but at the end Nihal was just too quick uh, and flagged him. Nihal beat Arvind. This is a position which we are going to uh, look at today in our class and also Nihal was beaten by Gukesh. So that threw the tournament open. Arvind finished second and then the last round was very interesting between Gukesh and Vidit where Vidit won uh, a mate in three so let's see if you guys can spot it in this position it's black to move and mate in three let me just zoom it in a bit yes john wong has said very kind of indian players an example to the rest of the world thank you so much john i think indian grandmasters and indian top players are very very uh, empathetic, very sensitive and they make good use of their, um, how can you say, the power or the their stature and set a good example in the chess world. So this was the final game of Vidit and it was black to move, yeah, not white to play, black to move and he was able to checkmate his opponent. Uh, if the internet is stable, can you increase your quality of the stream? Okay, let me check if I can increase it. Although it seems like the stream quality is decent, yes or not really? Yes, rook into f4, g into f4, queen g2 check, king h4 and bishop f2 mate. Yes, that's the, the way uh, that Vidit won. Very good that all of you found this move. Uh, and he had 10 seconds left on his clock and he found this really nice mating idea. So this was the game and you will see that these three finished first, second and third. Nihal Sarin, Arvind and uh, Vidit Gujarati. Okay, it's limited to 360p. Okay, that would be really low. Let me just see. Uh, I go to settings, video. Uh, but somehow I cannot increase it. Um, Yeah, maybe I have to do it. Um, I mean, once the stream begins, I'm not able to change it. Uh, hopefully, I can do it tomorrow. I mean, uh, or I have to stop this stream, which which doesn't make sense. I hope you can understand uh, my. And once the chessboard is loaded, uh, perhaps it will be easier. Uh, yes, Gukesh was number 4. Here we have the final list. Number 5 was Vishnu Prasanna, Srinath, then Moksh Doshi and so on. And the good news is that we have been able to raise a total of uh, currently over 3 lakh rupees. Yeah, look at this. 3,13,921 is what we raised until now. 74,000 from this training sessions and 2,39,000 from the tournament. So it was, we have been uh, raising good amount and there is still some time left. You can all donate from the super chat and the pay you money link if you like in the description. And well, I hope we can reach, say, 5 lakhs. That would be a good number. Um, but anyway, all of you, thank you so much for your contribution. And we have been doing something truly special in the chess community. Okay, so let's get to some training. 
and uh, I want to discuss first a game of Nihal from yesterday and he was able to beat Arvind and this is a very common position in the semi tarash okay how does the semi tarash come so you go e6 knight c3 d5 cd and here instead of ed you take with the knight this is known as the semi tarash and here after e4 takes takes c5 rook b1 takes we reach this position very interesting stuff White has centralized all his pieces, has this beautiful pawn structure, but black has, well, pretty good pieces as well. So not a bad position for black. And here, after queen d6, I want you to take into consideration, first of all, the imbalances in the position. And secondly, what should black, what should white play here? Okay, white to move. White is Nihal, black is Arvind Chidambaram. Prad Gupta, I am in USA. Do you know how to get Chessbase account in USA? Yes, from chessbase.com. That's where you get it. Ilam Parthi has got it right. Good job. But first, let's try to guess, get the imbalances. Black has the open file, says Vaibhav Mazumdar. Yes, that's true. White, black has the open file. White has an isolated pawn, Tinku Saha. Which one? The A2 pawn? Yes, you are right. See, you all have gone back to your habit of suggesting moves without really understanding the position. The main aim of imbalances is to slow down, look at what's happening and then come to a move. Uh, so, so don't suggest moves. You know, I know that E5 attacking the queen looks really nice, but doesn't help you become a better player. You need to calm down. You need to think. White has a kingside majority. Black has a queenside majority, says Agastya Day. Good point. First of all, black has a queenside majority here, one against two. And white has, you can say, a central majority because this is where he has an extra pawn. C4 square is weak, says Vinay Khobra. Ragde, yes, this is slightly weak, you can say, because the knight can come in. Black knight is currently on the rim. White has more space. Black has queenside majority. C file is open. C4 is an possible outpost. Position is about equal. Okay, that's what Shank says. Let's look at Ishir Narayanan. He says white has center control. Material is equal. A pawn is isolated and C file is open. White pieces are passive compared to black. Knight A5 threatens knight C4. Evaluation equal plus. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Who else has given a thorough? Mayur Gondhadekar has written. Bishop file open. Knight on the rim but not stuck there. Safe king, two versus one majority on queen side for black. Activity, white has isolated pawn. Technically, king side majority, safe king, good center. Okay, but what's the evaluation? Very important. This is important. By the way, a big thanks to Harish Kumar for 40 rupees. He's contributed uh, regularly to the stream and also was there yesterday at Vidit's uh, live streaming by the way does anyone know who is Vinit Vinit uh, Ches what is his name Vinit Chesian is he here he contributed a massive 25,000 rupees yesterday his name is Vinit Chesian um, so if anyone knows him please let me know or if he's here 
Dharmaratne MST says white has a good bishop, white controls the center, a2 pawn is weak, black has the open file, white has the initiative, white pieces are well developed, king is equal, evaluation equal, plus, minus. Okay. Uh, one thing which I want you to understand is a, something is weak only when it can be attacked. So this pawn is not so easy to attack right now. It could become a weakness. But right now it's not weak. Okay, you can say okay, it's an isolated pawn. But imagine if the queen was here and the rook was threatening here, I would say a2 is weak. Okay. So now one very important thing that you must tell me is like Jaydeep Chakrabarti has suggested the move rook c1 here. Uh, is this a good move or or is it a bad move rook c1 pankaj panchal has also given a interesting evaluation of the position yes also aditya ramanathan has done a thorough evaluation and he feels it's plus equal okay is rook c1 a good move Aditya Ramanathan bad move, Harish Kumar good move, Mitesh Borak Khetreya bad move. No, try to think what is it that black wants, what is it that white wants. Okay, because such positions very important to understand what's going on, and this is how you can become a better player. All those who say good move. <coughs> Tell me what are you going to do for rook into c1. Would you take it back with the queen or with the rook? So you must take, if you take with the rook, I think you lose a pawn straight off. So you won't do that. So you take with the queen. Now I go rook c8, queen d2. And in this position, <clears throat> one of the things that black wants is more peace exchanges. I'll tell you why. Okay. Now, let's just go this way and put a position like this. Okay. So this is the structure that you are looking at. Okay. And it's very important to see sometimes in this manner. <clears throat> and I can actually add a, uh, add kings in this position so that it is, a, it is a legal position. And you will realize that it is actually black who has any chances to play for a win. Why? Because imagine... I mean, uh, here it's it should be a draw, logically speaking. But imagine a position like this. Oops, sorry. And you will realize that when you come to an end game, an outside majority like this pawns are more important than the central majority. Because when you have an outside passer, the white king will have to go here to hold the pawns and black king can then sort of clear up these pawns and is closer to the other side. Now, this is all very theoretical here. It doesn't work that way. But you get my point, yes, that when we are in the end game, it's better to have an outside majority. So... If I start putting in pieces here, like for example, I just put <clears throat> this position. Already, it, it is quite possible that uh, white is in some trouble here. Okay, Here, it becomes like a question of whether black can mobilize his queenside majority or not. You can say it's around equal. But 
the more and more pieces i began begin to add you know <clears throat> in this position say something like this the more powerful white's position becomes the reason is very simple because these pawns in the center have more attacking possibilities take away more space from black and when you have more pieces on the board this is more <clears throat> much better for white so let me get back the position of the game here and when we come back here you should realize that rook c1 is actually playing into white's hands big uh, black hands because after takes takes even if e4 is not hanging black would like to exchange pieces many times you know exchange it off like this and try to get his majority rolling so now we come to this position where we understand that exchanging pieces may not be a good idea so what did nihal do nihal did something very interesting here yes mayur hegde is absolutely right and the right move here is very powerful move d5 because after d5 ed e5 this is what is really very nice for white uh, ed5 is not as powerful because somehow this pawn is right now blockaded by the queen and could become a weakness in future like maybe i can go knight c4 this is a possibility or i can even think about playing rook e8 seems like fine move uh but ed e5 is really strong because after he moved his queen you go knight d4 and you see in a stroke you are able to close off this bishop get this knight on a powerful square and also have this strong pawn uh next you can start rolling your king side majority and you will see that knight is threatening knight f5 to knight d6 suddenly these pieces start looking a little bit cordoned off because of your active play in the center this is nihal versus arvind chidambaram the the guys who finished first and second in the tournament now g6 queen h6 very good move rook c3 was not such a great move rook d3 takes takes queen b4 and here uh, nihal played knight f3 threatening knight g5 with a mate uh, rook e8 was played but after knight g5 it was game over somehow the attack became decisive here queen f4 was played and now i want you to find the best move to finish off the game b alert so your opponent is a strong three triple national champion in classical rapid blitz and you need to finish him off on this move what would you play white to move john wong says kumoch calls this sweeper sealer interesting so d5 is like the sweeper and e5 is like the sealer yeah something like that yes white became a pawn down amay but the point is that he gets activity and black pieces somehow are left outside the board yes all of you uh, here reshu jain sagar chess have got the right move ujjal datta as well you see that queen into h7 is a good move but after king f8 there is no decisive queen into f7 mate because the queen is protecting this pawn so you just play g3 and the queen cannot stay in con connection with this pawn cannot come here knight is there cannot come to f5 bishop is there and so at the end he took uh, he resigned this game because he is losing 
so good job by all of you as rightly pointed out by many g3 is the correct move so i i hope that you are able to understand how imbalances can make a difference here in your thinking and also just logically thinking which pieces to keep which not to keep e5 was suggested by many people but i think that it just opens up this bishops diagonal and perhaps if you want to do this why don't you play d5 ed and e5 isn't this much more logical okay to to kind of fix your knowledge you know in this what we have discussed i have another position for you um let me see if i can pull it up here yep this is well where did i i had actually taken it for a class like one of the previous sessions but because of lack of time we couldn't complete it but i think i might have it it was botwinix game and it can be useful for you to understand this entire uh, thing so let me just give me a second yeah i will try to find it uh yeah ab not this one okay um yeah let me yes there was this very famous game by nidor uh, kasparov nidor as john wong rightly said but also there was a very nice game by botwinik which i wanted to show um but okay let i'll i'll find out find it out later and and give it to you <clears throat> okay um let's check this position and now we come to our theme of today which is the open file so this is white to move what do you think is the evaluation of the position how many of you think the position is equal who is better here Anushka Bhatt how to download games well we'll put it a, put it up in our report uh, today yes white is winning as everyone rightly pointed out the right move is rook to d7 and you know this is when you start playing chess you know things are not so simple many of you will not be told that seventh rank is important like in this position this is the important rank that where you should put your rook there is an open file for example if your rook was on a1 you should put your rook on an open file all of this which looks obvious now is not very obvious was not very obvious when you started playing chess and similarly some of the things which are very obvious to grandmasters is not obvious to a lower rated player and similarly what is obvious to a 2700 may not be obvious to say weaker gms in this way uh, here rook d7 should be obvious to most of you but for many it might seem like what's the big deal i can defend this pawn but the thing is this rook not only ties down this rook over here but also the king and there is pressure on both these pawns and now the white king can simply waltz in and finish off the game the black king would love to remove the rook away from here but because the g7 pawn is always hanging and there is so much space on the seventh rank 
this position becomes it becomes quite easy by the way all those who uh, are affected by the crow i think it's it's okay i mean i can go and push him off but very important is that to try to focus on what's being what's important and this is uh, often the case even on the chess board there will be lot of distractions here and there but you need to focus on what is more important so let's try to try to focus here uh, i know that at some point i have to go and take him out but at least for now let's see if he can we can bear him okay king c4 and now a6 was played but after king d5 c5 rook d6 rook b8 king c6 you see the full value of activity and open files and the seventh rank so the the moral is open files should lead your rook to the seventh rank here this is the important thing of controlling open files if you don't if you can't reach an important square like the seventh rank or sometimes it's the sixth rank then there is no me meaning of holding an open file yeah okay let's go to the next one so this position uh, is very interesting and is reached in many times grunfeld you know grunfeld we reach many times such position where black has a majority white has kind of one pawn here but white has a central majority the king is in the center so tell me with your assessment who is better here and why do you think so yeah sumed even if the king is on g1 i think even still white would be completely dominating because i'll just bring my king over now let's let's first try to understand uh what's happening here rook h c1 everyone says someone says rook b c1 anup datta says black is better tinku saha says white is better prathamesh divekar says plus equal arka says plus equal mayur hegde says plus minus separate okay interesting white is clearly better says ilam parthi quest says white due to active rooks okay very interesting nandan says black is better because his king is safe okay very interesting comment king e3 suggested a move by someone see this is the point yeah there are so many different possibilities someone says the king is weak the king is safe someone says white has good development someone says black has open uh, queen side majority what is more important is to be understood and this is where uh, the real talent lies when you play chess you know not like um, what are the imbalances you think about it and it's done you need to understand what is more important here well in this position it turns out that white is clearly better the reason being that his king here is not really weak because there are very few pieces on the board right now so it's true that his king is out in the open but it's very difficult to launch an attack against it so in fact the king being on d2 is an advantage as compared to the king on g8 which is passive right now okay and the other thing which is very important is that you have a rook on the open file here which is semi open file which is limiting the bishop on c8 and next you can bring your other rook here to land on the seventh rank this is important but first of all you must understand if it was black to move what would he do so if it was black to move he would this i always do because then i understand what is my opponent's idea if i see what is my opponent's idea 
I will be able to make a better move. So here this position is white to move, but I still want you to think what is black's move? What should black do here? Okay, so if you can figure out what black should be doing here, then you uh, would be able to make some prophylactic moves and stop his ideas. Yes, very good, Swanand, Uday Pai Deti, D6, E6 is what uh, black wants to do. If it was black's move here, he would most certainly go for E6, okay? This is what he would do. By the way, thank you all for your answers. Sri Kumar, Siddharth, Aditya Ramanathan. Uh, I do go through what you have written, Sanchit S. But uh, I am not reading it entirely right now. But thank you for writing it down meticulously. And plus equal, Aditya, your evaluation is correct. I would put it as plus minus, not separate. E6 now means that this pawn is in trouble. So that is why even if you play rook hc1 as the first move in this position, then after e6, it's already a little bit difficult for white. So therefore, the first move, what should be white's first move? Can anyone tell me now after all of you got e6 as the right move, what should white play? So when you get your opponent's idea, you must try to see if your idea is stronger than him or if it is not, then you must try to stop it. Okay, this is what is known as prophylaxis. Prophylaxis means trying to stop opponent's idea. Yeah, very good. Anish Adiga, Shanks, Sairam Sampat, Neu Patel, Uday Paidetis, Tharun, all of you, John Darrell. Jan Daryl, Sumed Ramteke, Aditya Ramanathan, Harsha Indukuri, Vaibhav Mazumdar, Soham Shirode. Very good job, guys. The right move is king to e3. And you will see that the king is well placed here. Now e6 can be met with just take. You cannot really take with the bishop because b7 is hanging. True, a2 is also hanging. Then I can go rook a1, bishop back and take on e7, a7 and I will be a pawn up in that endgame. Which will be kind of drawish but white will have chances 4 versus 3. So he played in the game rook b8, defending b6, threatening at some point to play e6. Now rook bc1 makes a lot of sense because if you play rook hc1, then black's idea is clear, he wants to go e6. So instead of trying to put rook on b1 and c1, he decided to change its position now to d1 and c1. Okay, king f8, rook c7. I presume that e6 would have been still better than what happened in the game, but white would have continued rook hd1. Okay, so... King f8, rook c7, and now rook d7, rook hc1, takes, takes, king e8. And now it's your move. What would you play here as white? You know, you have your rook nicely positioned, but once again, think ulta. Okay, think in the opposite way. Ulta means opposite. Instead of it being white's move, give the move to your opponent and see what is your opponent's threat. So let's assume if it was black to move, what would black play here? Yeah, Jaydeep, thank you so much for contributing 800 rupees. Once again, Jaydeep, uh, Yeah, there was a small lag there, small disconnection. I hope that uh, it won't last anymore. Uh, and hopefully it will be all stable. 
so let's sit back again in the position let's think and get our brain wrapped around it i saw that lot of you did suggest the move king d8 for black very good very good i think this is a right way to think in chess often that you give the move to your opponent think what his plan is and his plan is king d8 to evict the rook from the seventh rank to remove the rook from there and therefore now we come to this point as to what should white do here what should be white uh, white's move and shanks has given an interesting idea also aditi says the same also kalidos pechi they you all say that white must play e5 so that after king d8 you can go d6 not at all a bad suggestion absolutely not but let's say if i take take and play bishop e6 i feel somehow it's quite possible that black okay still it seems clearly better for white i mean there is no doubt about it so e5 um yeah e5 is not at all a bad move in the game actually he played the move d6 and you will see that somehow d6 is a much more concrete and fast move the point is that if king d8 you take d into e7 or rook into e7 and you are simply winning yeah i think d into e7 is more accurate and if he plays e into d6 then you give a check now if king d8 you can take on f7 so he goes king f8 and then bishop c4 and you will see that now f7 is attacked bishop e6 you take 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 on h7 threatening a check on h8 king g8 oops rook e7 e5 rook e6 <clears throat> king f7 rook d6 and white is a pawn up now instead of being pawn down and he won another pawn here and later on the game so you will realize that uh, here maybe instead of playing e5 king d8 d6 and this position it could be much better to go d6 first so that after takes you don't allow his bishop to settle down on uh, c4 on e6 you give a check and after he goes to f8 you come back and now forcing bishop e6 and you see this is an absolute control of the seventh rank the king cannot come up and uh, you win another you win back your pawn and this is just winning okay i think uh, this was a very instructive game to understand what is the importance of the seventh rank and now let's look at something more no so open files lead you to the seventh rank yeah that is clear to you now but let me just tell you one more thing that open files can give you open files can also give you outposts okay what does that mean let's look at this position and tell me how is the move b5 okay how is the move b5 does it help white does it help black you know what black was afraid of is that the bishop may come to b6 and sit down here but he said okay let me play b5 to stop that how is this move tech wait says i left my online school class oh that's it's a brave decision john barrel but batula says bad because it weakens c6 okay also sagar chess says it weakens c6 and creates an outpost here very good this is the right point c6 is weak so you understand now that actually every pawn advance can lead to weaknesses and here c6 becomes very weak and you will see that rook a c1 is the correct move so here if you were black what would you have played in this position
instead of b5 what would you have played in this position let me just show you the game what happened he played b5 rook c8 then he plonked his rook on c6 this is uh, outpost if you take i will take and get a passed pawn so he played queen b7 but after rook c1 and queen c2 white has complete control on the c file because of this beautiful outpost on c6 so what should have black played here instead of b5 and very good <clears throat> all of you have given the right answer Suri suryan sharma swanand datar rs jai aditya ramnathan neev patel deepak dhami pooja duggar tinku saha sujata shastri rishila banerji nirmay garg nirnay garg kalidos pechi abdul kalam sagar chess ankit bhut ilam parthi pratamesh divekar saurabh kodar srishti chhede swanand datar fani verma deepak dhami abdul kalam pravinash ambalagan mitesh borkhetaria hema logu jot durban has not given the right answer fani verma srishti chhede aditi well i tried to finish all the names but there are just too many so i won't even try and also some people repeat so i i cannot get everyone but rook c8 was the correct move and then after rook c1 you can take take and play um, rook c8 and exchange more pieces and it also fits into our theme of space white has more space and when your opponent has more space you try to exchange pieces yeah so you take here and in the end the game was uh should have been drawn but b5 was just a horrible positional blunder okay let's look at one last example i think this is going to be very useful for you um in general so here black to move what should black play yeah if it is buffering just try to refresh it i think it should be fine try to think of the imbalances in this position and tell me what should black play here and also what should be black strategy here quest says sagar can you give us a pdf of all the ideas in one page <clears throat> you know when i uh, when i attended uh, i mean i didn't attend but i was there as the manager of the camp of kramnik and gelfand and they were training 14 of the youngest talents of indian chess i realized something very important uh, they taught openings every day and there were 6 hours of opening training for 10 days that 60 hours of training and um, gelfand taught something to the one group kramnik taught something to one group so there were seven students and so at the end of say halfway through the camp everyone said uh, sir can you give us the the print out or can you give us the pgn file of all the openings that you have taught us and you know what kramnik said he said that you know what we taught you is just the starting point what you need to do is revise this material on your own so you know there were certain recordings that were made of that of those classes and those they had to re revisit and look at it and imagine 60 hours of content but according to kramnik if you don't do that okay then you won't really improve because all the while you are looking for shortcuts you want someone to provide you with a pgn file you want someone to provide you with pdf you want someone but when it comes to you sitting down on the board mm -hmm. opening a video 
that I taught and writing down stuff, trying to understand that is too tough. So then improvement becomes too tough as well. So that's what I learned from them that a shortcut can often be a wrong cut. Okay. So it's very important for all of you to work on the material given to you on your own. Don't try to say, okay, give me this, give me that. Whatever you've already learned, try to revisit it, revise it. Okay. I think one more example should be given here before we move to the position is that once Fisher, uh, Fisher's friend who was a beginner came to him and said, can you suggest me a chess book to improve? So Fisher said, okay, uh, you know, take this book and read it. So this guy goes back home and says, okay, this is given to me by Fisher, one of the best players in the world. He must be right. So let me read it. So he started reading through the book and he went over it entirely. And then after a week, he came to Fisher and said, you know, I've completed the book. Here it is. Tell me what should I do next? And Fisher said, here, take this book again and revise it. Do it again. And this is what uh, Fisher knew that actually every time you do something again, you learn something more. And uh, it's important, like someone will tell you, read 100 books, but also it could be quite possible that if you read the same book 100 times, maybe you would learn more. So this is what I wanted to tell through my uh, small story here. And um, this position is very, very interesting because there are certain rules that we have learned, which is that this is an isolated pawn. So the side with an isolated pawn must keep the pieces on the board, but there are no knights on the board. Okay. So the square in front of this cannot really be put by a knight. You know, if we had a knight on D4, it would have been amazing. At the same time now, let's try to remove the pieces from the board. So for example, if I were to say, remove all the major pieces from the board. Okay. So it's a hypothetical situation, but let's do it this way and you will understand that actually here the position although is better for, uh, I mean, here the problem is that there could be certain tactical ideas, but also, okay, they are not working. Uh, say you go, white goes, black to move goes, king e7, c4, king d6. I think black is doing fine. Also at the same time, if you try to come here, king d6, king e2, this end game is not easy to break. In fact, it's a draw. Yeah, this position is drawn. So black is slightly worse for sure. Okay, that is without question because he has an isolated pawn and also the bishop is bad. But here, contrary to what we have learned, it is a good it is a good thing for actually black to exchange pieces because more the pieces, the more um, defensive task increases. So that's the reason why black played rook into e1. This is an important move. And then after rook into e1, many of you have suggested the move d4 here. Very interesting move. Uh, but what if I just take... And then after you take, I take with the king. Is this my king? Is it like going to be checkmated on uh, f3? I don't think so. If you give me a check from b7 or c6, I'll go queen e4. It seems like a perfectly fine position for white. King will go back to g2. So I think d4 is a bit premature. Rook e8 is the correct move here. Because black wants to exchange as many pieces as possible as we just discussed. So you might be getting confused as whether you should exchange pieces or not when you have an isolated queen pawn. But it also depends on what are the other pieces on the board. If there was a knight here on f3, perhaps it would not have been a very good idea. Even that is a theoretical draw, like not a theoretical, but good draw drawing chances. Uh, knight versus bishop but here it should be an easy draw for black after the major pieces go out okay so now the question is 
should white exchange the rooks or not if not what should white play what would you play here as white not to take on even but directly d4 mm, yeah but still i'll just take queen d4 still is possible ah bishop f3 and queen b7 okay maybe i'll i'll play c, rook e8 rook e8 and cd4 so bishop f3 can be taken with the queen there that's the point yeah all those who said to conserve and preserve the rook by rook d1 well done you are becoming better and better at chess your understanding is improving and remember chess has a lot of important how do you say guidelines but you can never say this rule will work in all the positions you need to think for yourself and here because there's a lot of pressure on the d5 pawn next c4 can come up h5 h6 can come up white is clearly in the driver's seat also the open file is important but here there are no squares on the open file that the black rook can get to and that is the reason why uh, in this position white is better and he maintained the rooks okay now i want you to uh, i want to show you one game of mine which i think was one of my best um, efforts when i was young i think it was in 2007 so i was 17 years old um, by the way we have done a bit on the open files today i think we covered what was important open files are important to hold on to you can reach the seventh rank you can get outposts on the open files but sometimes it is also important that you give up the open files to do to take something important like the d5 pawn in that position okay now uh, this was a game that i played in 2007 in asian juniors which happened in mumbai i still vividly remember that event it happened in the goregao sports club and i was one of the players um, I was 2200 and this was my first win against a 2380 uh, sort of highest rated player that I had beaten in that point. He is I am Abhishek Das uh, and I was white and I began my game with d4, d5, c4, e6 and c3. He played c5. This is known as the Tarash defense and here uh, I played the move e3 because I sort of knew that my opponent may play cd4 which is this Henning Shara gambit where you take on d4 and then after knight c6 uh, attacking the queen you go back then he comes here then you take then he avoids the queen exchange and he puts his knight here and it's complicated you are a pawn up but black gets activity and I was not in the mood to play that. So what I did was I just played e3, okay. Now, Telugu chess says I was born in 2007. Okay, so when you were just about to be born, I was playing Asian juniors. Uh, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6, cd. And here you remember we had seen actually after knight d5 to uh, bishop d3, cd ed bishop e7 do you guys remember this position that we had actually discussed in the class in the iqp uh, structure positions so this is what we had discussed and um, i was hoping that this would happen but he took with the pawn mm -hmm. so i played bishop e2 he played a6 I played castles, he played bd6, I took, he took and I played b3. This is very common way to play. He castled, bishop b2 
and now we reach a position of isolated queen pawn as you see here this is an isolated pawn um, he played bishop e6 and here I went knight a4 he went bd6 and I played knight d4 okay and he played bishop d7 so here I began to think what should I do in this position because uh, it looks nice for me you know this entire thing but you know should I go rook c1 should I go knight c5 after rook c1 should I do something else by the way a big shout out to Tahseen Mohammed who's contributed 40 rupees and he says would like to see another class in day 11 format what happened on day 11 it's difficult to remember but if you can just tell me okay so here uh, I began to think and I think rook c1 is the is the best move uh, I felt but then I was a little bit worried about knight to e4 and with the queen coming to h4 and I didn't like because it also stops knight c5 so I said okay um, let's take so I took here and he took with the bishop and here I played the move queen d4 okay and he went for the move rook e8 now he has two ideas one is bishop e5 and then you know he can take here and ruin my structure the other one is to go rook e4 which is also uh, attacking my knight on e4 so i said okay i will play knight to c5 uh, and my opponent looked at me and he said hey you are blundering something have you seen everything and i said okay i'm not sure yeah like we, we spoke through the eyes it seems um so black to move do you think i have made some mistake think because you see my knight when it is just protected by the queen is a little loose so how can black take advantage of this Ah, Shivam Choudhury says on day 11 you taught ideas on Nimzo Indian from both sides. Okay. Got it. Well, B6 here um, was not my worry actually. If you go B6, I can play something like Knight D3 and I should be okay. Or even knight into a6 just win a pawn should be fine yeah bishop e5 has been suggested by many people but then i just go queen d2 that's what happened in the game and i ask him what's your plan now so what was his plan And believe it or not, like I'm, uh, this is not a, I'm not trying to boast or something, but this is uh, something that I had seen in the game here. What should black play here is the question after queen d2. Queen d6 actually, if you play, then I'll take on e5. Uh, and then after say queen e5 or rook e5 I just play rook c1 and should be okay for black uh, for white yeah new Patel is tactically alert also Reshu Jain is alert Jan Daryl is alert very good guys so now the question is that once you see for example if you play queen d6 I can just take and I think this position is better for white slightly uh, let's say you take with the rook I play rook c1 I think black uh, white has an edge here but what I what my opponent thought I had missed was to take here and after king h2 
to play queen d6 and you know this theme which i must tell you and you must remember it's known as lpdo what does it mean lpdo basically means loose pieces drop off okay loose pieces drop off and whenever you see a loose piece in the air like here there is a loose piece no one is defending it remember there is a tactic out there so bishop h2 king h2 queen d6 now g3 was what i played queen into c5 and here i went for the move bishop d4 okay he went queen e7 and i played the move queen to b2 and this is what i was actually aiming for in the game by the way i must tell you that instead of taking on h2 a better move would have been knight e4 because after knight takes e4 d takes e4 this is just slightly better position for black because he has space he has nice bishops everything connected so this should have been what black should have done but he was tempted by this extra pawn so he went like this and i got this position and now i want you to actually understand the imbalances here and tell me who is better according to you yeah kavita naidu can we can we arrange an online simul yes we'll try to do that it's actually possible on play chess tom lasker said i said 94 well done tom lasker that was the best move in that position what about here now what should you play what do you think yeah mohini bhave very good king g2 and rook h1 is a good idea because now what had been that extra pawn can be used as an open file to attack against the king black is a safe king no this king is looking safe but if you look at this oops not the diagonal that way but this and then the king moving to g2 and rook h1 it looks it looks dangerous actually for black yeah the position is actually dynamically even it can be said because okay let's look at some imba ishir narayan says white has semi open h h file maybe he is going to spoil the king side pawn defenses so that d5 would be iqp and double def pawns okay but material black is a pawn up remember that black is better but white plays well it will be draw says funny verma Sagar Chess says White has a battery on the a1 h8 diagonal. White has the open h file to attack. White pair of bishops are in open position. Yeah. So what is your evaluation here? Do you think White is better or it's because materially Black has a pawn. So don't forget this important thing. John Darrell Batula says White is a pawn down but has the bishop pair. Black bishop is bad. The knight is tied up. White has good compensation and is better. okay very interesting john darrell you have at least put it very clearly what you feel sumed ram take says white has open file bishop pair active pieces white has initiative evaluation is plus minus okay vraj chess says black is pawn up white has a bishop pair black's bishop is bad black bad bishop is bad bishop white as initiative overall plus equal very good guys what i'm seeing here is i don't know about what the evaluation whether you're giving is right or wrong but you are logically sort of deducing the things you are cutting them down and then giving an evaluation at the end this is how uh, you should be playing chess thinking about chess and i i'm very happy uh, what you are doing right now Aditya Ramanathan says white has bishop pair white has better pawn structure black has an iqp white has safer king 
So it has two open files and an open file on H1 black is a pawn up. Overall evaluation plus equal. Yes, during the game, I also felt that the position was around plus equal, but I would say it's complicated. And maybe the best way for black to continue is to go active. And how do you go active here? Is to actually play knight to e4. And this is sometimes quite difficult because after bishop takes g7, a pawn was hanging, but you play now. What should what should black play here in this position? What should black play so that he gets the activity in this position? Plus equal was the, uh, by the way, a big thanks to Sri Devi Rongali, Shashank Aswat, Mikhail Botvinik, for, for Pankaj Panchal, Swayam Ubale, for giving in their evaluations and their thoughts. Yeah, f6, mm, then bishop h6, and then I go bishop f4. Yeah, anyone, Divya HL, good move. The the idea, Mayur Hegde, not D5, D4, that's what you want to do. Toilet math as well. D4, Sagar Chess also got it right, is to open up this bishop. And sometimes, from being a pawn up, you have to go pawn down. But then you get activity and after Queen G5, the position is not clear. This knight is well placed. This bishop is suddenly become one of the most powerful pieces on the board and this is how uh, black should have played but you know my opponent got a little nervous about my attacking chances with king g2 rook h1 so what he did was he played the move bishop to b5 and this turned out to be i think not at all a good decision because after this i played bishop takes b5 a b5 by the way it was also possible to insert a check here knight g4 uh, a big thanks to anurag deshmukh for contributing 40 rupees guys if you would like to contribute please do so from here or from the payment link in the description uh, all the money goes to pm cares fund okay so king h3 a b king g4 check here and uh, now a good move is queen f3 with the idea of rook a6 rook h6 i take rook a6 queen d4 rook g6 queen f4 and uh, this would have been much better white is still, still slightly better but it's closer to equal so he took a b5 and now i took on f6 he took with the queen. Maybe this was better to take with g pawn. But he took with the queen. And now we come to this position. <laughs> where the pawns are just unbelievably ugly looking. Yeah, I mean, uh, what do you think? Why it is better here? He's a pawn down. But the quantity may be less, but look at the quality. I mean, black pawns are all either isolated or doubled. Yeah, four pawn islands, Karan Pari. Two doubled pawns, Dandapani, Kupuswami. I want you to have a look at this position for a while and try to understand that pawn structure is very bad so yeah take a picture says shutartha maiti <laughs> sagar chess says all black pawns are emanating social distancing yeah seems like it here it's easy to say plus minus but as you previously know that every double pawn gives your opponent an open file and so there is pressure down here because of this open file black could take this open file so but my first task was to actually 
activate both of my rooks and the king and so here i went rook d4 king f8 rook d1 rook c5 e4 and here uh, king e7 was better but he went rook a8 i took on d5 takes takes and now the pawns are equal and b7 is hanging and there's always a move like rook a7 is always very difficult to make you know you are passive the rook has nothing to do you can bring up your king slowly uh, so he said okay chuck it i will chuck that pawn up and i will try for activity so i took the pawn rook c3 king f1 rook c2 king g2 i repeated the moves to get some time g4 and now f3 slowly moving my pawns and pieces ahead b5 b6 king e8 and now i must get the king in so i played check and i played king f2 of course b7 could also win perhaps but i want to keep the option open why to you know give away the options in the position i can get my king slowly later to that b7 square so makes all the more sense to keep it open king e2 king d7 and here i went f4 king e7 king d2 king d7 king c2 rook b4 king d3 rook b1 and finally uh, i said it's time to move in now king a6 and my king went to that square rook a4 rook c8 he took i gave a check he played king d6 i gave another check he played king e7 if he goes king d7 i can already take on f6 so he played king e7 and now after king c7 my opponent resigned because let's say if you take here i have b7 if you come here i could play this but even making a queen is just a simple win um so this game i think made a uh, big impression on me based on the imbalances so many things were happening like for example first of all black trying to win a material imbalance here with bishop takes but then giving white actually double bishop advantage and also the ability to attack on the king side and also this bishop is bad then black had to realize that he was in danger and play actively with knight e4 but he went passive and he tried to exchange pieces and next we move to the next imbalance where black still has a material edge but the pawn structures are just terrible very bad pawn structures structure and slowly and steadily i managed to win this game so uh yeah i hope that you you were able to learn something from this example and we have a couple of minutes more so i would like to take maybe one um uh, game from someone who's here let me just see which game should i choose because there were many games which were interesting um and which maybe fits into our theme for today that we learn okay uh yeah let's look at devarsh borkhetaria i think he is here maybe mitesh he is the same guy or maybe it's his brother uh let me know mitesh if devarsh is your real name and we are going to look at this position and the question is that in this position white played the move h3 oops black didn't take that's a blunder h3 was played so my question to you is is h3 a good move or not this is a game which devarsh borkhetaria played against uh, im ramnathan balasubramanyam okay this is a game between the two mitesh says yes my name is devarsh okay wonderful so tell me if h3 according to you is a good move or a bad move 
and if you think it's not a good move what should white do shri kumar says my game with nigel shot please okay we will have a look at it bad move say says reshu jain chess with harsh please display my name where should i display your name tinku saha says good vedan chess says yes it is quest says no bad good bad ilam party says bad all those who say bad move please try to tell us tell me what should white actually play here what is a better move in this position shriyana malya says bad reema singh says good mitesh says my father's name is mitesh okay so your name is devarsh got it h3 is not a good move says sagar chess because after nh5 weakens the structure and bring more connect on f4 possible uh, right now the knight cannot go to h5 but at some point could go but i think the move h3 in general doesn't fit into the the demands of the position if you if you remember the most important thing in a position when you have an isolated pawn is fill in the blanks the most important thing when you have an isolated pawn is what can you tell me is dash so here white has an isolated pawn so what is the most important thing that he should do f4 yes possible f4 is a possible move but then you must consider knight into f4 bishop f4 queen d4 check maybe it works knight into d5 should you take on d5 do not exchange yes when you have an isolated pawn often in this position yes very good all of you who said activity in the fill in the blanks when you have an isolated pawn you should go for activity very good jan derel kimaya virme virle ishir narayanan anira katarmal ilam parthi agastya de new patel keep more pieces says mikhail botwinik that's also a good uh, fill in the blank uday pai deti new patel tech with aditya ramnathan excellent guys very good white must play actively says uh, banerji saurav banerji and so the move now what should white play here according to you f4 is one move uh, but i think let's say f4 does this not work takes takes check and now this is hanging so you play bishop e3 but then i take this and there is no good discovered attack on the queen so the right move here is either bishop c2 is not the right move but bishop c2 with the idea of queen d3 to create some threats here but what i like more in pradeep das has rightly mentioned also ilam parthi has mentioned that move well done well done is knight a4 because here you want to put your knight on c5 and if he plays b6 then this becomes weak you can just take it and otherwise you can go rook c1 knight c5 and you get play on the queen side yeah so i hope uh, you were able to understand devarsh that many times when you face a strong opponent there is a high tendency to make certain pointless moves and this will actually uh, hurt you in the long run because as you see you played rook c1 and it allowed him to take here you can't take uh, this because a3 hangs so you took with the rook and now you will see a pair of pieces were exchanged and this pawn is still weak and then uh, even more pieces got subsequently exchanged uh, 
and yeah you had a you didn't have such a bad position but in the end you lost because of your passive play uh, in this game so it all started i think from here when you played the move h3 instead bishop c2 or even knight a4 would have been better moves okay uh, let's see if we have time to take one last game here uh, this was a game between arav patel and maybe this already touches upon our tomorrow session which is on development so let me just bring up the position arav was white his opponent was mystery boy this was an online game and arav here played the move knight to g1 okay uh, clearly it's not a good move as you can understand you don't undevelop your pieces in the opening maybe the logic is he didn't like his knight on f3 he wants to get it on e2 so my question to all of you is what should black do here how should black take advantage of white playing little slowly you know sort of carelessly undeveloping his pieces and also because white is white many times even if you make such a bad move you don't really land up in a bad position you may reach equality but here black must do something concrete yeah tempo is lost kimaya that's true so the question is how should black play here all those who said e5 tell me what is your idea after d5 because white would really like to keep the position closed he is behind in development and he would like to keep things closed all those who want to send the games can send it to chessbaseindia@gmail.com uh here black wants to open up the position and let's say after e5 d5 it sort of closes down and you can play c6 but i go knight e2 you take i take and somehow you have been unable to open up the position and white finishes his development so that's why the right move as rightly pointed out by john darrell and many others i think i read even ilamparthi baku choku shashank aswath uh is to actually prathamesh divekar says e5 slash c5 so prathamesh i see you in the game with your e pawn and c pawn both in your hands moving both the piece pawns forward and asking your opponent what should i do now tell me which one do you like more okay e5 fine i'll get this back and i'll play e5 yeah is that how you put it you need to tell me one move not two okay c5 i think is the better move because after d5 you can play e6 and this is what it means to open up your position when uh, when your opponent is behind in development uh, and let's say in g2 ed ed rook uh, knight e5 castles take take and you will see that having a uh, uh, sort of some lead in development has converted into having the bishop pair but at the same time having a free flowing development with rook e8 knight e4 coming up and i think uh, black is just very fine maybe even slightly better yeah here so that was the game of arrow i think when you make a move like knight g1 or your opponent makes such an undeveloping move you should be quick and telling him look you can't do this in the opening i am going to really play actively and i am going to blast open the position i would even look at moves like b5 in this position but they don't seem to work so e6 is actually much better yeah yeah from the kings indian it has become a modern benoni that's true sauro that is true okay uh maybe we look at one more thing here uh what's this game is genius 1998 here who is genius 1998 
if you don't send me your names i would never know harsh raguvanshi versus niranjan navalgun very difficult game actually i i just couldn't understand what was going on here so knight f6 knight c3 bg7 niranjan is black he is 2350 harsh raguvanshi who is 1189 is white uh and here harsh played the move castles which turned out to be slightly inaccurate because of knight into e4 if now knight into e4 then d5 and black is completely fine so here what should black play what is the best sorry what should white play in this position white to move arka i will see if i have a game of yours i will definitely show you when i get your game show the game to the everyone uh karan yes your game is in the list maybe we can have a look at it tomorrow or day after it's a very nice mate funny verma always mentions chess base india is boon for indian chess and budding chess talent in india thank you so much funny verma very kind of you f3 says shutartha also reshu jain f3 is a move that white wants to avoid in such positions uh mainly because there is a small difference here between the normal dragon and the actual dragon so if you play f3 the pawn is still not on d6 you know in the normal dragon when you play knight f3 d6 the pawn is already on d6 here you see so then f3 actually uh, sorry here f3 castles bishop c4 it makes complete sense but when you play here f3 then it won't be very very good uh, i think first of all there are many ideas in this position with um, d5 coming in one go but there is a very strong move that black has which equalizes here i think if i am not mistaken this is exactly the position where uh black has a powerful move so what should black play and then once you tell me i may check it with the reference because i think i have played this move already with black lot of people play f3 here in fact the right move is bishop b3 in this position where you come out of these forking ideas with d5 but you must ask yourself what's wrong with f3 it looks like the most natural move yes new patel very good you are right arka you say that you want a line with e4 c5 and c3 mm. well i would suggest to look at certain games of top players in those lines and try to figure out on your own what should be done yeah new patel you are right ec is also right very good ec uh, the right move is actually queen b6 here very good all those who found this move because now b2 is hanging and if you play bishop b3 what's happening next how should white play black play here Yes, E C. You are absolutely right. Also, Saurav Banerjee is correct. Knight into E4 is a very good move. And the question to you is: Is this better for white? Better for black? What's happening? What is the evaluation according to you? It's my last question of the day. Is this better position for white, for black, or equal? yeah i want an evaluation here i know all of you are telling me moves well if you play knight into c6 here 
then e3 is hanging that is the main point this is the main point that you lose a piece so uh, oops sorry f3 queen b6 bishop b3 knight e4 everyone says minus plus prathamesh divekar says equal very good how is it equal anup datta says equal okay abdul kalam says equal mukilan bala says equal well it's also a test of you if you know this position it's e easy to say equal if you don't know you have to calculate and it's quite possible that uh, you might say that this is better for white or better for black but as it turns out uh, that in this position i think um, if i'm not mistaken knight is it knight d5 a move here yeah knight d5 then you have queen a5 yes yeah this is what maybe i'm i'm mis mixing up two things here or how is it c3 yeah this is the move actually c3 and now this knight is hanging here yeah this is the line actually i didn't mix up things actually it leads to somewhat equal position uh and then now you need to go knight c5 and then i can take on c6 take here knight e7 king h8 uh knight into c8 and here uh, after rook c8 yes black has uh, white has bishop pair but i can always take this off also now it's time to bring your rooks into the center so i think the position is around equal and this is just an interesting line you know 94 is the correct move but after knight d5 if you take anything else like knight e4 after bishop d4 black is better but knight d5 is the only move check c3 and because this knight is hanging it has to move you are you are able to get this sort of tactical uh, blow where the position is round about equal okay so i hope that all of you learned something and especially uh, who is white harsh raguvanshi that here it is important to play bishop b3 not f3 not castles bishop b3 maintains all the edge in the position for white he can fight for an advantage next move he can go castle then h3 it's a well known line look into it uh, if you can okay so i will take your leave for today i think it's already 10:47 we have overshot the time limit there are a lot of people who have stuck with me today thank you so much uh, just to show you the amounts that we have raised until now we have raised 74719 last couple of days have been quite low in terms of the money that has been raised maybe uh, you are all saving up for the last couple of days perhaps when you can contribute um, but yeah if you like you can you can contribute to this but thank you all so much for being here uh, from for learning and for enjoying this session uh, what is the homework for today well in i would put a game that i have selected uh, let me just see if i can get it here um yeah it is the game between <coughs> yeah this game has special significance in my life so i'm going to share it with you but i am going to remove all the commentary from this game and going to give you for homework 
for you to study and to tell me what you feel so i will be putting up a link outside on the in the comment section so you can download it from there or you can put in the moves from there if you can't download it but you can obviously see it so i am sharing that game so this is your homework to analyze this game and uh, until then i'll see you tomorrow for the 18th session uh, last four days of our class so give it your all give it all your energy and i hope that we will be able to learn tomorrow very exciting session on development going to see some very interesting games uh, and if you have any games related to it based on development where you developed quickly or your opponent punished you for slow development do send it to me at chessbaseindia@gmail uh, you have a pay you money link so if you want to contribute you can do so from there and uh, do subscribe to chessbase india channel this is sagar shah signing off take care and have a good day today bye bye